The start of the story takes place in Seoul in the year 2021. A group of students are seen cornering one of their fellow students, Du Yimin, who is a studious young man. However, Yimin is not one to be easily frightened and he calmly asks the bullies what they want. The bullies try to intimidate him with their aggressive behavior, but Yimin remains unbothered and states that they are wasting their time as he is already late for school and needs to go. Yimin then walks away from the bullies, leaving their leader angry and frustrated. As Yimin is walking away, the bully leader becomes even more furious and attacks him. However, Yimin is prepared for this and closes his book which he was reading and kicks the bully to the ground. Yimin tells the bully that he does not have time for his stupid games and that he already has a hard life and does not need any additional burden. However, Yimin did not realize that there was another boy behind him, who had a baseball bat. He hits Yimin on the head, causing him to bleed and become injured. The bully then gets up and says that Yimin deserves punishment for butting in on their matter. Yimin becomes angry and curses at the bully, which only makes him angrier. The bully then tells his friends to beat Yimin and they start kicking him. Suddenly, a strange thing happens. Small bubbles of purple lights begin to float and increase in number, covering everything. Then there is a bright flash, and everyone is shocked and confused about what is happening. Despite the confusion, everyone's attention is drawn to a man who is near the bully leader. The man tells the bullies that nothing has changed in the last 20 years, and that they were still wearing the same uniform as he used to. The bullies are confused by the strange man who is wearing strange clothes and they think that he may be a senior from their school. The man tells them to stop fighting and to not hurt Yemen because he was there. But the leader of the bullies does not care if the man in front of them was an upperclassman in telling them to stop. He calls the strange man a hobo and tells him that he could be lying as well. But he does not care even if a teacher comes here and he would do what he wants with Yemen. He pokes the man claiming to be his senior and puts his finger on his chest. The bully tells him that it was not his business to interfere here, and if he tried to step in where it was not required, he would be beaten by his juniors. Surely that would be a humiliating thing for them and if he did not want to suffer that humiliation, he should run away right now. The man seems to mind it but then he quickly controls his annoyance. He says that the kids nowadays had no manners and did not how to behave with their seniors. He is quite easygoing and dismisses the bully's aggression as a typical teenage behavior and tells them that he was also rowdy back in his days but he respected elders. The leader of the bullies thinks that the man was no big deal and irritates him further. He puts his fist against the senior's chest and insults him, calling him a crazy man. It seems that is the limit for the senior and he gets angry at the rude junior. He catches his hand that he had placed on his chest, and says that if he made him more annoyed, he would crush his hand. The bully frees away his hand and decides to punch the man, but even though he used his full power, his punch did not connect. It went past where the man was and hit just the air, the man had vanished. The bully finds that the senior was already standing behind him when he says that it was a poor punch. The bully is shocked at the great speed he moved with and the senior says that he was taking things too far. He was overconfident in his abilities but he was still a kid. The man is not going to show him something so scary that he will be on the straight and narrow for a long time. He raises one hand and starts chanting some words in a strange and unknown language. He looks serious and the other students are watching him intently. Then the man snaps his fingers, but the thing he wanted to happen does not happen. He looks dumb and confused now, and so does everyone else at the place. But he is the most confused of all and snaps his fingers again and again. When the bullies ask him what he was trying to do, the man replies that he was trying to summon his familiars. But somehow, his magic was not materializing. The leader of the bullies is furious at this point. He says that today was a terrible day for his mental health. First the student named Yemen stood up to them in class and now he had to deal with an idiot. But this time, the senior does not care about the insults and keeps on snapping his fingers like a madman, trying to make adjustments so that his magic materialized. But when nothing happens, he gives up on using magic to scare the kids and decides to go the other way. He says that he did not need magic to teach a lesson to a few kids anyways. He casually approaches the leader of the bullies with an outstretched hand and flicks his forehead with a finger. That simple act is a powerful attack as the boy is sent flying and hits the wall behind him. Everyone is shocked on seeing that and the man says that it was the turn of other bullies now. He does the same with everyone and they all get knocked out without the chance to do anything. The man calls himself Kang Woojin as he introduces himself to Yemen. Yemen is impressed by his strength but the man was still acting like a crazy man. He asks Yemen about the date and year and is shocked when he finds out that it was just 2021. 
he had been summoned to another world in 2016 and 20 years had passed since then. Thus he was thinking that the year on Earth would be 2036. But then he thinks that it was only a gap of 5 years, and that was much better as the world would have not changed so much that he lost his place in it. Wujin tells Yemen that he was going home and tells him to not fear bullies. But as he snaps his fingers again while shouting teleport, nothing happens. But then he remembers that he cannot do magic, and says that it must be because of some errors during moving across dimensions. The only way he can reach home is to take a bus or a train, and he has no money. He approaches Yemen without hesitation and asks him to lend him 2001. Yemen was already thinking that the man was too weird and crazy, and he does not have an option but to lend him the money. Yemen lent Wujin a 5001 bill, and he is happy to get more than what he asked for. He is thinking that he would repay the nice boy someday while he is going home. He thinks that only five years had passed, that meant his family will not have forgotten him. His parents and little sister would be so happy to see him again. As he is walking, he spots something that looks out of place to him. The military is standing in front of the subway entrance, and they are fully armed and alert. Wujin does not understand what it means and asks two office workers passing by about the military in front of a subway. The girls look at him and then at each other and start laughing, saying that how could he not know it. They call him an old man and ask if he was from an isolated part of the world. As they laugh, they tell him that it was obvious that military would be guarding the entrance to a dungeon. With that they leave, and Wujin is sure that the girls were just making fun of him by telling him false things. But as he walks around the subway station, he thinks that he might have to take a bus after all. But then he spots an entrance that was not guarded. It looked empty and he thinks that he could get down using this. He finds that the path he took was completely empty and dimly lit. There is a gate that is blocking his way to the subway station and it is locked. Wujin thinks that the subway was out of order and the army was there to help with the repairs. But he sees that there is an empty cabin or a watch post near the gate. And he spots some keys on the desk. He thinks that this was the best chance to try and enter the subway. But there really are no running trains and he decides to come out before anyone finds him where he should not be. But as he touches the gate, he gets a mild shock and a system screen pops up in front of him. The screen tells him that he was in a dungeon and could not leave. At that moment, Wujin realizes that even though the girls were making fun of him, they were not lying. He wonders what could have happened in the last five years to change this world. When did dungeons start spawning in a peaceful world like Earth? But he cannot do more than think about the changed situation. The system warns him that he could not force his way out of the dungeon without a return stone. Seeing that he has no choice, Wujin decides to go into the dungeon to find the thing called Return Stone. As he goes inside the station, he feels the presence of monsters around him. He was not sure if that feeling was a real thing or was he imagining it. But he does not have to wait long for a confirmation as a big red wolf jumps on him from behind. Wujin evades its first attack and as the wolf pounces on him again, he uses a magic spell to restrain it. But then again, he realizes that his magic was not working in this world. If that was the case, he would have to fight it another way. But then he realizes that he had seen the monster somewhere. It was only a drabbit, a weak monster from the world of Alfin where he spent the last 20 years. Wujin thinks that even if he did not have magic, a mere drabbit was no match for him. He picks up a steel pipe from the floor while dodging the attacks of the monster. And then he stabs it, killing it in one hit, satisfied that his physical strength had not suffered much. But that was not the end of the monster attack. Soon, a group of drabbits surround Wujin and he fights and kills them all. He thinks that he could hold drabbits down as long as they did not come in enormous numbers. But if there were stronger monsters in this dungeon, he might be in trouble without access to his magic. But then he gets a notice from the system that he had leveled up. Wujin excitedly checks his stats and is disappointed that he was restored to a level 1 player. All of his stats are quite basic and he thinks that it was unfair. But one thing that relieved him was that his class was still a necromancer. He also had 99 assignable stat points and he could use them to boost his abilities. Wujin thinks that if this was the way to grow stronger, he could benefit from the fact that dungeons and monsters were appearing in Seoul. But then he starts to think about what had happened to him. He was a level 99 necromancer on Alfin, or in other worlds, he had reached the max level. He thinks that the 99 stat points that were given to him were a poor effort to compensate for that but he would take them. Also, there were two skills he had. The system said that the skills were transferred and he could not give them to anyone else using any means. He thinks that these skills must also be something that had to do with his coming back to Earth. The first skill is Combination Box Summon which can be used to combine pre-existing items into new ones. It could also be used to extract substances out of materials and items. But Wujin is not happy that even his inventory had been reset, and he had nothing there. 
The second skill is Achievement Shop where he can buy things using achievement points. There were three categories of things to be brought, skill books, equipment, and consumables. Wujin is impressed with this skill as he did not have something like this in Alphen. This reminded him of the convenient online shopping that he missed in the other world. He decides to buy skills to help with his growth. The best things to start would be a searching and detection skill to look for the return stone. And then he would need a skill that could let him use his necromancy powers. He would buy the skeleton soldier summon skill for that. But then he realizes that he did not have enough achievement points to buy anything. Even the cheapest skill books cost 10 points and he had only 5. Wujin thinks that he could earn the required points by hunting the monsters and first he should adjust his stats. He distributes his stat points uniformly and balances out all his attributes. His strength, agility and other physical attributes are now all at 30, and his magic capacity and domination attributes are at 10 after assigning the points. Wujin tests out his new abilities after that and he finds that he was much stronger now. Wujin now has a clear goal for short term. He would get more points and buy the skill books to search for the return stone and summoning skeletons. And then he would return home in time for dinner. And for that, he would have to kill as many drabbits as he could find. But there seem to be too many drabbits in the dungeon and Wujin is getting bored of killing them. But now he is level 3 and has also enough achievement points to buy the skills he wanted. He buys the search and detect skill and learns it. He immediately uses the search skill to look for a return stone, but it is not nearby. Wujin thinks that if the return stone was not here, it would be deeper inside the subway station or the dungeon. He decides to go inside and keep searching for it. But as he goes inside, he comes across a staircase to go to a deeper floor. On the deeper floor, Wujin spots a whole pack of drabbits. Their number was too much for his liking right now, and he does not want to go in there alone. After all, it was never his style to fight alone. He buys the second skill he wanted Skeleton Soldier Summon. The requirements to use this skill are that he must sacrifice a corpse to summon a skeleton soldier. He would consume one point of magic and one point of domination for summoning one skeleton. Now that the requirements for summoning are known, Wujin adjusts his stats. He assigns the points he got from killing the drabbits to magic capacity and domination now. He adds 5 points to each of them and raises them to 15. Then he sacrifices the bodies of the drabbits he just killed and summons a few skeletons. Wujin finally feels like a necromancer and orders his skeleton soldiers to get ready for battle. On his command, Wujin's skeleton soldiers charge at the pack of drabbits, but he soon finds out that his level 1 skeletons were not nearly strong enough to defeat the wolf-like monsters. His skeletons are getting beaten and pushed back by the drabbits and Wujin realizes that he cannot win like this and has to change his strategy. Wujin commands the skeletons to not attack but just block the attack of drabbits. If they could hold on and defend against the first wave of attack, the battle was won. Once the first wave of the drabbit attack is over, it is time for Wujin to attack. He jumps into the middle of the pack and starts killing all of them without any difficulty. Then he uses the dead bodies of the drabbits to summon more skeletons and goes on to the next area. There, he uses the same tactic of first blocking the attack and then taking advantage of the preparation time of the monsters. Then he uses the dead bodies of the monsters to summon more skeletons and repeats this process. Wujin did not realize that he had already defeated all the drabbits in the dungeon and cleared the dungeon. Now the only thing left is to find the return stone and get out. That is not hard for him with his detect skill and he finds the stone and returns to the place he entered from. Outside, a man returns to the place he was supposed to stand guard at. His relaxed attitude is suddenly overthrown as panic hits him when he finds that the gate to the dungeon had been opened. He had left the keys on the table and someone had used it to enter the dungeon. This was a very serious act of irresponsibility, and the man fears that he was going to lose his job over this incident. But before that he has to worry about the person who went into the dungeon. It was most probably a civilian and things could turn out terrible. He is about to call the office that manages the dungeon to send a rescue team. But a portal opens in front of him and Wujin comes out of it. The man is shocked but he is also relieved that the man came out safe. He thinks that he understood the condition better now and asks Wujin was he an awakened. But Wujin does not know what he is talking about. In another part of the city, someone else is planning to do something illegal. A man is looking at a bag full of red stones that are actually a loot from the dungeon he had cleared. He works at a guild but he is not very loyal to it. He looks at his loot and says that the guild charges too much commission and he can barely make any money. He was going to sell all these stones in a black market at higher price and get rich quickly. Thinking of this, the man goes outside, but he is not aware that someone is waiting for him there. A confident and arrogant woman named Leon he is waiting for the man. 
She is the captain of the main team of the H. Warring Guild and she was on duty to capture the thief. She has now caught the man red-handed while stealing the bloodstones and she is angry at him for betraying the guild. She insults him saying that he was a lowly man who would betray the guild for just a little money. But she was going to follow due process and asks him to peacefully surrender and come with her for his trial. But the man does not think that he would be better off by surrendering. He is nervous and cannot think straight, but he does not want to be caught. He thinks that it was his bad luck that Leonie was the one sent after him and he cannot get away from her so easily. But he decides to take his chance, he would use all his strength to create an opening and then run away. He launches an attack by summoning magic ice bullets at Leonie, but she easily dodges his attack. He uses this chance to run away but she immediately catches him and says that since he did not want to undergo trial, she would deliver judgment right now. She unsheathes her sword and kills the man. Just as her work is finished and she plans to go back to report it, Leone receives a text. It is from one of the entrances of a dungeon under her guild. Someone entered the dungeon without authorization and cleared it. But they cannot find anything else about him and they need her help to investigate the case. Leone is now curious about the daredevil who went into a dungeon by himself illegally. But Wujin is already out of the subway station and back on his way home. He is waiting at a bus stop but he has forgotten which bus would he take to reach home. So he decides to walk around and find the place by asking people. But as he is walking, he thinks about the recent changes that had happened in the world. He was only gone for five years and it already had its share of monsters and magic. In some sense this world was becoming like Alfin, the world where he was summoned. Wujin is worried about his family thinking about the changes. He hopes that all the people in his family are safe and healthy. And then he recognizes that he was on a very familiar road, the road that led to his house. He goes to the place where his house was and is shocked to find a giant corporate building at that location. His house had gone away and he had no idea where to start looking for his family. But it was getting dark and Wujin was at a loss in more than one way. He decides to give up looking for his family today and would try using a different method tomorrow. His stomach growls and Wujin realizes that he had not eaten anything since he came to this world, and now he was getting hungry. He goes to a fast food joint to eat noodles and is content after eating a bowl. Thanks to the money he borrowed from Eamon, he could fill his stomach. He had missed this food in Alfin too. But then he thinks about the next problem in front of him, where was he going to spend the night? If he had some more money, he could find lodging at a cafe. They were cheap and had everything from food stalls to a bath. But he does not have money for that and neither does he know anyone in that line. He thinks that in that case he could go to a subway station and sleep on a bench and then he remembers that there were monsters there. He is dejected and hopes that something happens soon. His wish is answered, as at the same time someone he knew enters the shop. Eamon comes to the fast food joint to have dinner as he had only a little amount of money right now. He had given 5,001 to Wujin and now he could not afford anything but noodles for dinner. He was thinking about how Wujin was a weird and crazy person when he finds him sitting on a stool there. He is as shocked on seeing him as Wujin is happy on seeing him again. Wujin does not waste time and greets Yemen. He asks him if he lived with his parents and were they home. Yemen does not understand what Wujin means but he says that both his parents were dead and he lived alone. Wujin slips up and says that was a good thing but then he immediately corrects himself. His way is now clear and he asks Yemen to let him stay at his house for the night. Yemen is taken aback by his mannerlessness, but Wujin says that he was not going to stay with him for free, he would pay the rent. He gives Yemen the change he received after eating and Yemen realizes that it was actually his own money. But as he is thinking how to refuse Wujin, he feels a fist coming at his face at full speed and then it stops. Wujin had spotted a fly and took care of it in his way. Yemen is too terrified at what he just saw or did not see and decides to let him stay at his house. Wujin is grateful and promises Yemen that he would pay him back in full soon. The next day, Wujin starts looking for his family again and he knows exactly where to start. He visits his school and meets a teacher he knew. The teacher is surprised on finding him alive and asks where he had been. He had suddenly disappeared one day five years ago and then there was no news of him. Everyone had taken him for dead. Wujin says that it was a long story. But to explain it simply, he met with an accident and nearly died. But now he was fine and had returned home. And he needed the help of his teacher to find his family's address. He asks the permission to check the student records for that reason. In the school, Yemen is being cornered by the bullies from yesterday. They are annoyed at him and think that he was saved because of the crazy guy yesterday. They surround him at his desk and tell him that he better not think that he was safe now. Yemen is quite calm and tells them that he understood what they wanted. He would settle it today but he wanted no commotion in class. The leader of the bullies gets angry at his confidence and pulls his hair. 
he is about to slam Eamon's head on the desk when Woojin arrives at the class. He stops the bully and then says that he had quite a good timing. The bullies are all shocked on finding him here and Woojin asks them to follow him. He takes them to the roof of the school and apart from the bully gang. Other students also come to see the drama. The crowd has gathered and they start talking about the man. He was a senior who studied in this school five years ago. There are only rumors but most people have heard that he had beaten the bullies yesterday and planned to do it again today. Most students do not believe that he could face against all of them even if he was strong. But Woojin proves them wrong quickly as none of the main bullies attack hit him. He casually dodges them while the boy curses him. Woojin thinks that people like him were found in every world, both in Earth and on Alphen. He remembers a man named Cassus of the Alphen Alliance. He was an annoying man who was overconfident in his abilities and tried to suppress others. He had made terrible allegations on Woojin back in Alphen and called him names. He was called the Necromancer of Massacre and the Sorcerer of Depravity. Cassus tried his best to instigate others against Woojin and he succeeded in doing that. Because of that, those people invaded his territory and surrounded him, planning to kill him. The main bully here is really frustrated as he cannot hit Woojin even once and the latter makes fun of him. He shouts at the boys with him and asks them to back him up. He was confident that they could not lose to him if they attacked him together. Everyone listens to what he says and they attack Woojin, but he wanted that. He knows what is the only solution to get rid of the problem of bullying. They had to be shown their place. If they were treated the way they treated others and met with an overwhelming force that they could do nothing against, the bullies would remember it for a lifetime. That was exactly what he did with Cassus. He remembers the scene after he had defeated everyone who invaded his territory along with Cassus. He defeated all of them and walked away as they lay on the ground. And he is about to do the same to do with the overconfident kids here. He smacks all of them and it only takes one hit from him for them to give up fighting. Only the leader of the bullies is left for the last and Wujin taunts him to attack him again. But as he tries to vent out his frustration using a desperate attack, Wujin beats him too. But as Wujin is finished teaching a lesson to the delinquents, he notices a taxi that stopped at the school gate. A woman comes running out of the taxi and Wujin immediately recognizes her. The worried woman who is running to the school office was no one else but her mother. Wujin rushes downstairs to meet her and their reunion is very emotional. She hugs him and cries saying that she was really relieved to get him back. It was a miracle that he was alive and well. Wujin is also very emotional and happy to get back to her. Then she explains what had happened with the world. Right after he disappeared in 2016, something terrible happened at the global scale. Every subway in every country suddenly turned into a dungeon, spawning dangerous monsters. This incident was called the Dungeon Shock and it changed the world forever. In one such subway station, Wujin's father died while he was returning home from work. With his death, all the responsibility of the family fell on her. Her son had recently disappeared and now her husband had also died in unfortunate circumstances. Wujin's mother had to deal with the grief and take care of the financial condition to look after her younger daughter Sua. They were never a rich family, but with the death of the only earning member, they were pushed to lower their living standards. Another blow came for them when Sua fell sick. She was only eight years old then and looking after her and paying the medical bills took a toll on the woman. She had only seen hardships and tough times since Wujin had disappeared. But she takes him back to home and tells him to wait here while she picked up his little sister from school. She leaves and Woojin looks around their new home. It was way too small to accommodate their family. Looking around the small house and the condition it was in, Woojin realizes the burden her mother had carried alone and the struggles she had gone through. He looks around the room and in one corner he finds a pile of boxes. All of them were filled with his father's belongings. His mother could not bear to throw them away and Woojin understood why. When he looked at them his heart felt heavy and he thought how much more painful it would have been for his mother. His mother returns home after picking up his sister Suo from school. She is a shy girl and is only 12 years old now. She was 7 when Woojin went missing and now she is a bit cautious around him. Their mother tells her to greet her big brother nicely and they have a nice and wholesome family moment. Their mother has taken the day off and starts preparing food for her returned son. At night, the family of three is sleeping but Woojin cannot fall asleep. He is thinking about various things, his family, the condition of the world, and about Alphen. He did not know for what reason was he summoned to that world and no one ever told him anything about it. But it was a weird world, almost like a game. There were different terrains and monsters to fight. People could learn skills and abilities and magic. But it was not easy like a game. It took guts and effort to survive in that cutthroat world and Wujin did whatever he could do for that reason. 
he was desperate and did not hesitate in doing whatever was needed to live. As a result, he became powerful quickly. He became a necromancer and a max-level necromancer at that. After 20 years in Alphen, when he finally met the requirements, Wujin met a being known as Dimensional Administrator. Dimensional Administrator looked after the balance between different worlds and could move people from one world to another, and Wujin had asked it to return him to Earth, and he did it all so that he could be reunited with his family. He had hoped to live nothing more than an ordinary life in this world, leaving behind everything he was in Alphen. He wanted ordinary boredom and ordinary happiness, but this was something else. The world had changed and so had his family's conditions. Even though the world was not his responsibility, his family was. And to look after them, he quickly needed to earn a lot of money. And to support his family might prove to be tougher than living in Alphen. The next day, Wujin starts his quest to earn money. The first thing he does is to buy a smartphone. He thinks about what the man at the entrance of the dungeon had asked him. It was about being an awakened. The security officer had asked him that he was not a civilian and thus he had to fill a form about his visit to the dungeon. Most probably, being an awakened was the quickest way to make money. Wujin leaves his house and texts his mother that he was going to live with a friend in a nearby area. He thinks that this would put less stress on his mother as he looked for money. He planned to live with his only friend in this world right now, and that was Yemen. He was concerned that he was getting one more favor from Yemen, but that was not a problem as long as he planned to return it in full. He decides to call him before going to his house but someone else picks up the call. Wujin is shocked on learning that Yemen fooled him and gave him a wrong number. Yemen is returning home and he is thinking about Wujin. He had saved him not only once but twice, and thanks to him the bullies did not mess with him. His actions had benefited him for long term yet he had not been able to properly thank him. But he is utterly shocked to find Wujin inside his home eating food. He asks him how did he get it, and Wujin says that he saw him while he was entering his password the other day and remembered it. Yemen says that was trespassing and it was a crime. If he wanted to come here, he should have asked him before. Wujin says that he tried to ask him by calling him but it turned out that the number was a wrong one. Yemen is taken aback that he was now caught and decides to not push Wujin further. But then Wujin comes to business and asks Yemen what he knew about being an awakened. Apparently Wujin was one and Yemen is shocked on hearing this, but he should have realized it earlier considering his strength. He tells Wujin what he knows about Awakened and confirms that it was a way to earn huge amount of money. Wujin is excited and asks more about the details and Yemen tells him to register with the Awakened Association to be able to enter dungeons. He could also join a guild to make things easier for himself. There were people who cleared the dungeons for the loots and rewards they found and there were those Awakened who worked at the association. But Wujin does not like the idea of joining a guild or working with the association. He says that the best way to earn more money was if he cleared a dungeon alone. But Yemen says that even though he could earn more money, it was dangerous to go into a dungeon. Having a guild would be good as they could provide support and facilities to their members. But Wujin says that he does not have any time to waste by applying with the guilds. He would have to take exams and need to go through formalities, but all he wanted was to earn money quickly. Yemen tells Wujin that even if he wanted to minimize formalities and keep most of the rewards for himself, he should at least become part of a party. That would be better for him and he could earn money more efficiently. But first, he had to download an app that would keep him updated about all the new information about dungeons in the area. It would tell him about all the dungeons, their ratings, and the monsters that spawn in them. Wujin is having some problem with downloading the app and Yemen takes it in his own hands. He tells Wujin that his phone was an old model and he thinks that someone in his family must be using it. It was slow and its software was outdated. Wujin is shocked on hearing this as he was told by the salesman that this was the latest model and he was getting a huge discount on that. He is angry and decides that he will take care of that liar later. Yemen has downloaded the app Dungeon Forum on his phone and shows it to Wujin. He could get all the information about dungeons here and could even reserve a time slot for entering it. But that would come later and he should go to the Awakened Association to get registered as soon as possible. Wujin is ready to go to register immediately but Yemen tells him that he needed to pay fees to enter the dungeon even if registering was free. Even for a one-star dungeon, the entrance fee was in thousands of one. But Wujin has no money and he cannot put the burden for it on his mother, so he can only ask one person for another loan, Yemen. The next day, Wujin goes to the association to register as an awakened. He fills the paperwork and moves to the assessment chamber so that his abilities can be tested and ranked. It is a circular room with most of its wall made of reinforced glass. Wujin was in the room and the people from the association were watching him through the glass. All the officials looking at him are shocked when they see his black aura as they had never seen it before. There is a dead animal in front of him and Wujin sacrifices it to summon a skeleton. 
A necromancer was a rare class and the people assessing Wu Jin right now had never seen one in person. They tell him that his class was a rare one but now he had to be tested for his strength. It was standard procedure for the strength of a summoner to be measured by the strength of his summon, and this would decide his rank. A projector creates a holographic image of a goblin and Wu Jin is amazed to see it. The official tells him to attack the holograph using only his skeleton, and Wu Jin does that. But it turns out that he is only an F rank since his skeleton was quite weak, and Wu Jin does not even know that it was the lowest rank. He learns it when he asks the officer what it meant. But even after he learns that he was ranked as the weakest category of Awakened, Wu Jin is not disappointed, he simply does not care. The officer also tells him that even though he was only an F rank, his ability was unique and most parties would want him to join them. But Wu Jin is happy that he can join a dungeon finally. Wu Jin takes the help of the app and reaches a dungeon. Its rating is 2 star and he thinks it would be good enough to start. There are already many people at the entrance and most of them seem to be part of a group. Wu Jin is also invited by the leader of one such group. He is Bidasu, an E-rank veteran miner. He tells Wu Jin that their team had seven members and they had space for just one more. But Wu Jin initially rejects his offer saying that he would go alone. Dasu explains to him that it would be a waste of his entrance fee to go alone. He could only enter the dungeon for a limited time and there was a limit how much he could mine in that time. But then Dasu learns that Wu Jin was only an F-rank awakened who had registered just two hours ago. That meant he was a beginner who knew nothing and had come to a dungeon just because he wanted to. He tells Wu Jin that since this was his first time in a dungeon, it would be the best way for him to join a team. That way he could learn everything and get the most out of his money. Wu Jin thinks that it was a fair deal and decides to join the team. Dasu tells him that the hourly fee to enter the dungeon was for a maximum of 8 people. That meant the 800,000,000 won that were to be paid to enter the dungeon for one hour could be divided by the team. Otherwise, it would be too expensive for one person to make a profit from the dungeon. And it was also much more efficient because mining bloodstones also took some time. Overall, even if Wu Jin thought he wanted to go to dungeons alone after this, it would be not bad to go with a party the first time to get some experience. While waiting for his party's turn, Wu Jin meets another newbie like him named Hong Songgu. He was also an F rank awakened and used fireball to attack monsters. Songgu is quite nervous and asks Wu Jin if he was not getting chills. But Wu Jin replies that a man should be strong even if he is afraid, and Songgu is impressed by his confidence and hard boiled attitude. Wu Jin learns that Songu was also scouted into this party by Dasu. He had awakened two months ago and then decided to quit school to work as a full time dungeon miner. As they are waiting, the team that went in the dungeon earlier comes out and they are injured. Some accident had happened and they could not keep themselves safe. A hobgoblin had appeared in the dungeon and the people outside could not believe it. A quarrel starts between different groups about what was possible and not but Dasu tells his group that quarreling like those people was useless. It was foolish to be certain about a dungeon as it could often surprise visitors. Sometimes the monsters that were not previously encountered and therefore not on the list could be found in the dungeon. This time it was a hobgoblin but there was no need to worry about that. A hobgoblin was a two-star monster and with a good teamwork they could defeat it without any losses. It was their turn now and the group goes in the dungeon and immediately starts fighting the monsters. Songu uses his fireball attack and Dasu uses his skill combustion that burns the eyes of the goblins. It seems to be much easier than Wujin had hoped for and the group is relaxed after clearing the first wave. He had also invested the rest of his stat points in his skeletons and they had become faster and stronger. Other Awakened are quite impressed by the unique abilities of Wu Jin. Dasu is mining the bloodstones from the dead bodies of the goblins and says that the mining rate in 2-star dungeons was much better than that in a 1-star dungeon. He could get 200,000,000 won for each stone and he gets greedy thinking about the money. The group clears the dungeon and reaches the final floor where the boss would be waiting for them. They enter and find that the hobgoblin was waiting for the invaders along with his goblin comrades. Dasu says that they were going to go with the normal formation but Wu Jin has his doubts about that. He asks him should they not be more careful when dealing with the hobgoblin. But Dasu says that he had already prepared for that. He had memorized the attack pattern of the hobgoblin. It used magic and they could block that using the shield abilities of a member. And then in the time the hobgoblin recharged, they would attack him together and kill him. Seeing that Dasu was the leader and he had a plan, Wu Jin does not push thinking that it was not his place to lead the team. Their plan gets initial success as the shield user is able to block the lightning magic used by the hobgoblin, and the other fighters attack the goblins. Wu Jin remembers that he faced hobgoblins when he was on Alphen. They were not particularly strong most of the times but they were not easy to deal with. 
What separated them from goblins was their higher intelligence that allowed them to use magic spells. But magic was not their best weapon, neither was their physical strength. The greatest danger they posed was their intelligence that allowed them to command other goblins. And it was about to happen in this dungeon as well. The goblins were united and they were using improvised weapons. One of the goblins shoots a poison dart at the Awakened who was using the shield and he dies immediately. Wujin realizes that the team was in dire condition as the goblins now had a commander. But Dasu realizes it too and instead of pushing ahead, he decides to run away. He screams at his party to run away immediately and all of them are scared after losing the cornerstone of their plan. But Songu is still stunned by what just happened and cannot respond to the call to run. He was charging his fireball and Dasu tells him to stop it and run away right now. They could not save their teammate who had died and decide to leave his body there. But as they are running away from the monsters, the party does not take measures to protect their back. The hobgoblin uses his lightning magic spell and it hits Songu and he falls on the ground. No one stops to help him and run away. Songu is lying on the ground surrounded by the goblins who are getting close to finish him. Wujin was hiding while all of this was happening and waiting for his chance. Now that no one else is around to see his real skills, he decides to hunt all the goblins. He summons his weapon from the item box and also summons his skeleton army to face against the goblins. But he knows that it was not easy to fight goblins when they had a commander leading them. That is why he does not charge head-on and decides to follow a strategy. He orders his skeleton soldiers to block the goblins from getting close to him and in the meantime, he would take care of the leader. He jumps up as the hobgoblin starts to chant his spell and stabs it to death before it can cast the spell. Rujin has leveled up to level 6 and he feels happy. It was better to work alone after all. But then he hears the groans of Songu who was luckily still alive. He asks Wujin to save him and Wujin shamelessly asks him what would he get in return. Songu strains himself and says that he would not tell anyone his secret that he was a D-rank awakened since he had killed a hobgoblin by himself. Songu begins working alongside Wujin, after he saves him and heals him, and he mines the bloodstones of the monsters Wujin killed. He thinks that the man who just killed all the goblins can't be an F-rank. Considering that he killed a hobgoblin and all other goblins alone, he should at least be a D-rank. Only D-rank awakened were known to be able to clear two-star dungeons on their own and adding to that his unique skill of necromancy and his ability to detect bloodstones and using the dead bodies of the goblins to heal others were exceptional. He could very easily be a C-rank awakened as he had registered only three hours ago. But what was even more crazy was that Wujin seemed to be obsessed with money. He asks Songu how much would all the bloodstones they gathered fetch and gets happy on learning that they were worth at least 8 million won. He tells Songu that all of these were his and Songu agrees readily. He is amazed by how greedy Wujin was. When he said that he would keep his secret in exchange of saving his life, Wujin said he does not care about that. He showed a victory sign to Songu, saying that this much would be enough. Songu cannot understand what Wujin means until he explains it to him clearly. Wujin wants Songu to give him 2 million won for saving his life. Seeing that it was not a bad price and Wujin had really saved his life, he had agreed to give him the money. With the dungeon cleared, Wujin locates the return stone and both of them come out to the safe zone using it. But as they are walking to the exit, Wujin stops Songu as he senses slight bloodlust coming. Since all the goblins were slain, it could only come from humans. He tells Songu that someone was planning to ambush them and it was not the monsters. He calls out the people from the party that were hiding upstairs to come out. They come out and they look very nervous. Dasu asks Wujin if they had really cleared the dungeon and killed all the monsters. Wujin does not immediately reply to them and warns Songu that he should be alert now. Then he turns to Dasu and asks them why had they come back. They had run away earlier and abandoned their teammates, so what reason did they have to come back now? They should have waited in front of the barrier and not here. Dasu is taken aback by these words and asks Wujin not to be so mean. They were all members of a team and they should understand each other's motivations. He says that they had made a strategic retreat on being overpowered by the goblins and now wanted to come back and finish their job. But by the time they returned everything was already over. Wujin thinks that he does not mean what he says. Dasu is looking at the bag on his shoulder containing all the bloodstones. He asks them if they wanted this and scatters the bloodstones on the ground. He tells Dasu and others that if they wanted it so badly, they should go ahead and try picking them. But his aura is intimidating and no one dares to step ahead. Dasu says that it was all a misunderstanding. They were not here to betray them and take the loot. He says that Wujin was obviously stronger than them as he could kill the hobgoblin and they could not. He apologizes for running away without them earlier, but he had a good reason for it. His life was on the line and he could not think of anything but to save it. 
he asks Wu Jin to believe him and says that they were here only to get back the return stone and run away. Wu Jin thinks that he might be overthinking about this. Maybe the ambush was meant for monsters and not for them. He had lived in Alfin for too long and maybe he was paranoid because of how things were there. But while he is thinking of this, his eyes start burning. It was the combustion skill used by Dasu. Dasu screams at his companions to kill the two men and an arrow hits Songu's shoulder. Dasu laughs at Wujin and says that he was right, they were here to kill them and take the bloodstones. But he should know it that all the awakened were the same. As he says that, he runs to Wujin and stabs him with a dagger. Meanwhile, in another dungeon, the main team of H Warring Guild has come out after killing all the monsters. Their leader Leonie is changing out of her armor into normal clothes when she gets a call. It was about the case from a few days ago when someone had entered their dungeon without authorization. She is informed that the name of the person was Kang Wujin and he had registered as an Awaken just today. That is why they could not find anything about him earlier. Li Yonhee is shocked that someone who had recently awakened entered a dungeon alone and survived. In the two-star dungeon where Wujin and Songu are under attack by Dasu and his people, the fight continues. Dasu is shocked when he notices that his attack had not reached Wujin. He had caught his hand even before he could stab him. Wujin says that for talking so big, his attack was quite useless. He punches Dasu and sends him flying. He then turns to the other people following Dasu and asks them if they were also involved in this conspiracy. The anxious look on their faces tells him what he wanted to know. He calls them shameless and greedy people who would resort to such cheap tactics to earn some money. He uses his magic and sacrifices the bodies of the goblins to summon more skeletons. He commands his skeletons and they kill everyone and Dasu is the last one left. He crawls backwards while begging Wujin to listen to him. But Wujin says that he would not wait for his skill cooldown so that he could attack him again. And with that, he kills the traitor. Songu is shocked that Wujin killed five people and yet he showed no symptoms of being troubled by his actions. Instead, he was checking out the loot on Dasu and is impressed that he was carrying a lot of money. He turns to Songu and tells him that there was no hope for people who stabbed others in the back, and he hated their guts. Songu is afraid and he agrees with everything Wujin says without thinking about it much. Wujin approaches him and says that since he had saved his life again, he would be doubling the price he had asked earlier. Now Songu had to give him four big ones. After that, he heals Songu when they come out of the dungeon. The person keeping records at the entrance asks them where were the remaining members of their party and Wujin says that they were all killed by the monsters. But the man then says that if they all died, how did they still manage to mine all the bloodstones then? Wujin replies that in this world people had to earn money even if it killed them and the man is impressed by the deep thing he just said. But he asks Wujin and Songu to sign on a document and says that their help could be required in further investigations of this incident. Wujin is happy that he got 13 million won in just one trip to the dungeon. Add to that the 4 million Songu was supposed to give him, he now had 17 million won in his account. He needed to go back to the dungeons more often and he would go alone this time. But Songu is thinking about the money he had to give Wujin. Due to the fear and panic, he thinks that Wujin wanted 40 million instead of 4 million and he does not have that much money right now. He thinks that since his savings would fall short, he might have to take a loan. He thinks that it would be better if he could plead with Wujin to waive the loan. But Wujin turns back and says that he really hated backstabbers. Songu is scared now as he thinks refusing to pay would count as betraying him and says that he would prepare the money soon enough. Wujin leaves him saying that he would be waiting for him to contact him. But as Wujin leaves, Songu overthinks and makes another wrong assumption. What if Wujin wanted 400 million won? But Wujin has already gone to the next place he planned to visit, the shop where he bought his new phone. The salesman is standing in the shop when Wujin enters and lifts the man by his collar. Before the salesman can speak anything, Wujin starts slapping him. The man is too terrified to try and save his life. He wonders if this was what they meant by indiscriminate violence that everyone talked about nowadays. He feels that if he does not play it right, he was going to die. The salesman begs Wujin to spare his life and he drops him on the ground. Wujin tells him that he hated backstabbers and those who lied to him. But the salesman does not recognize Wujin and says that he doesn't even know him. Wujin shows him the phone and says did he remember the man he sold this phone to. The salesman can now remember everything clearly. He had sold that phone to a loser who knew nothing about mobile phones. The same man was standing in front of him right now and he was really scary. Wujin's way to deal with the salesman works and he gets a new phone in exchange for the old one. He can tell that the new phone was different and worked a lot smoother. Wujin transfers all the contacts he had into the new phone but there are only five contacts. Two of them are the wrong number Yemen gave him and the salesman. He thinks that if the salesman had done something like this to him on Alfin, 
he would have torn his limbs apart. But as he is happily going back to Yemen's place with his new phone, Wujin sees that he is surrounded by people dressed in black suits. They ask him if he was Kang Wujin who had recently cleared a two-star dungeon in a two-man team. He hears the voice of a woman who says that he must be at least an E-rank to clear the dungeon like that. And since all the other members of his party was dead, did he plan to kill them in advance? But anyway, he had guts for a newcomer. Wujin is surprised and asks the woman who she was. She introduces herself as Li Yoni, the captain of the main team of the H. Warang Guild. Wujin can tell it right away that Li Yoni was strong. He uses his detect skill to confirm and finds out that she was the strongest person he has met on earth. He asks her if she wanted anything from him and Li Yoni says that they had a little problem in one of the dungeons they managed. She says that a rat sneaked into the dungeon and Wujin gets what she meant. She was talking about him entering the dungeon on his first day back on earth. He laughs at her saying that if so many people were required to catch a rat, the H Warring Guild was a very weak guild. He says that was to be expected since the dungeon was nothing special as well. But before he can complete his sentence, one of the men grabs his face and slams his head to the ground. He tells Wujin that a nobody like him did not qualify to speak ill about their guild. This makes Wujin angry and he grabs the man's hand and overpowers him. He is about to hit him when out of nowhere, Li Yoni kicks him and sends him crashing. Wujin does not have time to catch up with what had happened as he finds the woman standing on top of him again. She lifts her leg and stomps on Wujin's face. He realizes that she was too fast for him and had not even gotten serious yet. Li Yoni tells him that she would like to give him a piece of advice. Even if he was not a regular F-ranked awakened, it was in his best interest to not pick fights with people stronger than him. He had a creepy ability but that would not save him from everything, and he should steer clear of the h Warring guild at all costs. She leaves with the other people saying that if he did not follow her advice, he might find himself dead soon. Wujin is surprisingly calm after how easily he was defeated and humbled by the strong woman. He talks to himself saying that it had been a long time since he was stepped on like this, but he was going to remember her name and her guild. When he goes back and tells Yemen about what happened, he does not understand why Yemen reacted so explosively. Wujin calmly asks him if that woman or her guild was so famous. Yemen asks him how could he not know who she was. She was one of the only ten a rank awakened in the country. And the guild she was in, the H. Warring Guild was among the top three guilds in the country. The other two guilds were KH Guild and the Hammer Guild. They were not only powerhouses in terms of fighting, they had great influence over politics and economy as well. Yemen asks Wujin what did he do to get the negative attention of the H. Warring Guild on his first dungeon visit. But Wujin is annoyed by this question and tells Yemen that when he gets back his full strength, he would be able to deal with all the people from the H. Warring Guild without any difficulty. Yemen thinks that Wujin was joking or confused and laughs. But Wujin also realizes that it would be disadvantageous for him to deal with the H. Warring Guild outside the dungeons. His skills as a necromancer were a secret that he would like to keep from the world and they were already limited outside the dungeon. And then there was the question of how many skeletons he could summon as he would have to use dead bodies for that. But that can be thought about later, right now Wujin is in the mood to celebrate. He takes out a bag and gives it to Yemen saying that it was a gift. Yemen finds that the gift was a luxury perfume and he says that it was too much to pay back for the borrowed money. But Wujin gives him some cash as well but Yemen is hesitating to accept it. He gets emotional on receiving the gift and thinks that Wujin was really cool and generous. But with that done, Yemen learns that Wujin meant to stay at his place for much longer. And that was what the extra money was for. He asks Wujin wasn't he going to stay with his family from now on and learns that their house was quite small. Wujin planned to live here until he was able to afford a new one. But then he notices the new phone and asks Wujin when did he buy a new phone and how much did it cost. Wujin is casual and asks Yemen if this model was a good one. Yemen tells him that it was indeed the latest model and a special edition at that. The red casing of the phone was because bloodstones were used to make it, thus making it really expensive. But Wujin says that he got it for free by participating in an event, not telling Yemen what he did with the fraud salesman. But then he receives a notification that shocks him. His account had been credited with 40 million won from Songu. Wujin is shocked and decides to call Songu to meet him at once. Songu comes to meet him in a restaurant and is shocked when Wujin asks him what was the meaning of this. He had asked him for only four big ones and he had sent 40 million. Songu thinks that what Wujin meant was 4 billion and now he was going to be seen as a backstabber. He gets on his knees and asks for forgiveness and promises that he would pay the entire amount in time. The people in the restaurant think that Wujin was a lone shark and he is annoyed by the confusion. Songu explains to him that he misunderstood and would pay the entire 4 billion in time. Wujin is shocked and thinks that Songu was an idiot. 
but then he gets a mischievous idea and thinks that he could use this misunderstanding as a golden opportunity, and asks Songu how long would he wait then. With this the first part of the story is over. Wujin has made some friends and now he is thinking of taking unfair advantage of Songu. What will he do and how will things turn out for him? Let us find out in the next video.